Welcome back to the lab. Just an update, quick update on the Gloria before we get on with today's real project. So, intake pipe done, polished, welds disappeared like the customer wanted. Didn't do too terrible a job, I reckon. It's not bad. Could be a little bit better. I'm not not claiming to be the world's best fabricator as far as aluminium welding. That's actually quite hard. Anyway, but what we're doing today, that uh, little Nissan March that's hiding under the cover here, I'm going to pull the transfer box out of it, which lives you know, it's down there somewhere underneath. I'm going to pull the transfer box out, make sure that uh, the gears, bearing seals, stuff and things, everything to do with that is good. Because it's a um, it's a bespoke unit. It's the only one in the world. We're doing a couple of things a little bit differently to how you would normally do it, and it's just a precautionary thing, you know. Bits and bobs in there are spinning around up to about seven thousand RPM. So you actually want to make sure that that's all kosher and good before you go doing. It's about two hundred and forty k's an hour. We do it Taupo something like that, and if all that decided it was unhappy and wanted to stop. Uh, bad things are going to happen. So, we'll get it out of the car and we'll have a look, see how it's all getting on. Okay, Re one reversing transfer box removed from the little Nissan March. So, all of you wondering what the hell it is and how it works, it's really simple. It's just two gears inside there. There's a pinning gear, a spur gear, there's no diff or center viscous coupling or anything, or clutch, nothing. So, what that end does, that end does. That's the front. That side there just bolts straight onto the the Nissan 350Z diff flange. Sorry, camera's going ballistic. There you go. So that um, those bolt holes there, diff flange here, bolt from that side, done. Back end, that's a standard Nissan CV joint they use on the GTR skylines and all that sort of carry on. So it just runs in the prop shaft all the way to the back diff. And this one here, that's the input one. It just goes onto the prop shaft that goes into the, let's call it the front of the gearbox. It's the tail shaft of the gearbox. And all that happens is that turns around there, the other one goes the other way. So it's actually sounding pretty good, it does have a lot of free play, that's because the gears were machined quite coarsely, they were very very noisy, we had to get them CNC ground, although I'm thinking that's probably a bit more than what we had to start with, which is, um, that's why we're going to take it apart and see what's going on, check it out, make sure everything's happy, pretty sure it will be, let's just have a look to be on the safe side. Alrighty, let's get this bad boy split apart. So hopefully our camera is pointing somewhere sensible. Really need to upgrade my cell phone. Put the GoPro app on. Then I can put my cell phone somewhere and keep an eye on what what the camera is seeing that you guys are looking at. Oh look at that, it's already split open. Might be quite simple today. That's handy. Look, it's easy. Sneak peek, there's gears in there, that's a start. Look like they've got all the teeth on them. That's what we want to hear and see. Hmm. A little bit sticky sticky. No owner's, owner's manual for this one because I built it so I can just do this how I like. And uh, there we go. If anyone grizzles too bad for them, it actually looks okay on first glance. That's a combination of ATF and a little bit of gear oil in there, actually. No big chunky chunks in there. What are the bearings like? All right. Not perfect. I think they'll be okay. They should just pop out of there. Oh, this is looking beautiful. You can actually still see the machining marks on it. So this is going very well. No dramas here at all. 
And actually, I think I'm going to pop those in the lathe. And that's cool as too. Feels good. i pop this in the lathe again and give it a bit more of a machine. Take some more weight out of it. Quite, um, as you can see, they're quite large units. And that's, um, that's on purpose. I, I went for overkill. We don't want failures, so we went bug. Really big. Of course, these bearings, these are SKF bearings, which came from Waikato bearings. They're very good to us, one of our sponsors. We actually managed to kill a couple of them just with tolerances not being quite right. Totally my bad. Um, and Waikato bearings are like, yeah, we'll sort you out. New bearings, no worries. And away we go. Well, this needs a clean before we put it back together. But I'm stoked. There's no um, there's no massive chunks of metal, and no shiny stuff in the oil, no funny noises, nothing that I'm seeing in here that concerns me at all. I'll get it all back together, and we will carry on. Awesome. So what I'm doing right now is just chomping out some more material from the inside of the gear. You can see, obviously taking another quite a big bite you can see that second step in there so not a heap of materials probably 500 grams or something like that but it's all rotating mass it doesn't need to be there it gives me more surface area for cooling and should make things better I'll take this out a little bit larger diameter as well uh, there's plenty of meat there it's not going to break the shaft or anything so I shall do that here we go, so I'm pretty happy with that. Everything's good. Those bearings are bone dry. That sound pretty good to me. And um, these ones you're not going to turn because the other end of the shaft is on the bench. Chewed that out a lot. Not sure how much weight came out of that, but it's quite a bit. Best as I can do. Basically, you can't really take much more than that, or you're starting to run into the danger zone of you might break that eventually. This one here, really heavy gear. I'd like to drill all the way through another four spots, sorry, eight spots to make it quite a bit lighter, but it's been hardened. I don't have any gear here that's going to drill through that, and it's a long way to drill to. It's um, about 115 from that side to the other. So that might just have to stay the way it is. Um, another option would be drilling through here to reduce rotating mass. You can do that just don't want to really I'd hate to have it crack through here and spit a tooth off and jam up and try and kill me in the car so I'll probably avoid doing that these um, these flanges a little bit of weight can come out of here I can drill a couple of holes here and there and um, won't affect the strength at all make it quite light through there through there through there through there etc so I'll probably get on with that and um, we'll see how we end up there we go, all freshly assembled, no oil in there at this point, as I said I didn't do anything with this, I'd love to drill some more holes through here to take some weight out of it, can't do that at the moment, if they had a fancy boring bar with the right tool in it I could get in the middle here and chew out a whole lot like that on each side and leave the, leave the end as it is for the bolt holes, but I don't have a fancy boring bar so I can't do that. Alright, so that's all sussed, it's all back together. I did drill some holes in those flanges. I decided against showing everyone what I did there, just because reasons. But uh, it evolved a drill press and a little bit of swarf. Not a lot. We um, didn't get carried away with that. Just a little bit lighter than what it was. And basically same deal on that one that you saw on the lathe. I don't know how much was removed from that quite a lot probably <laughs> if you weigh what's sitting in there bit of a pile there a few hundred grams like in the scheme of things it's really not going to make any difference at all I just wanted to tinker basically while I was in there checking the bearings and the gears and everything I just felt like having a bit of a a tutu as we say here so that's the oil that came out of the box not bad it's not um it's not perfect. It's a little bit of grey residual stuff in the bottom there. 
but you kind of expect that in the gearbox and bearing in mind that box has no filters has no pump nothing it's just the oil sitting in there static um, it's what they call splash lubricated basically so the bottom gear the pinion gear munting around in there at a million miles an hour is flicking the oil up all over the place and where it needs to be so pretty happy all in all um, haven't got the lights in here because it causes flickering that you guys get all grizzly about so it's a bit dark too bad um, that's it really she's ready to go I'm thinking we need to do another drag race session with it um, in the sunshine she was cutting out after gear changes a little bit of a surge in power and then cut and then come back again and you carry on and what that was is the boost pressure setting was too close to the um, manifold air pressure cut like boost cut so it was um, getting too close to it there's a little bit of a hysteresis there so if you're approaching it quickly the system will see that happening and it'll shut it off before you actually get there so we're only like 10 kPa away from the map limit and it was just bumping into that so that's why we only ran I think I can't remember you guys might remember it was 11.8 or 11.2 or something like that it was in the 11s the car's pretty good for a 10 I'm pretty certain it just needs to be driven properly and it needs to not hit map limits the whole way there so that's one goal we should go back to drags and do that and the other one's the get to Taupo for the last round of super lap hopefully the car will run properly and hopefully the weather and the track conditions will be right and see if we can better our time there which was 135.8 or something 138.5 I can't remember it was pretty fast uh, we just want to go faster pretty sure it will do so um, yeah we'll get on with that in the meantime we will carry on with the Gloria maybe a couple of updates on that and then we'll be end of the month we'll be at Taupo for that session there and we'll see if we can figure out when we can get to the drag racing a little bit of work to do with the oil filter here and where the roll bar sits I'll probably just make some fancy brackets to go in here to drop this roll bar down and it would clear and the oil filter would go straight on the front that'd be the easiest way to do it um, but I don't always do things the easiest way so so we'll see and there's also it doesn't line up very well here this is supposed to be a roll bar for a or anti-sway bar for an S13 and these arms are supposed to be for S13 but as you can see there's no way that's going to line up with that nicely so um, that to that so I've got some work cut out for me there before I get carried away with that I'm going to check with low volume vehicle technical association and make sure that we can actually run these arms on this car they might turn around and say no we have to run the factory arms and in which case they may have a different mounting system here anyway which might correct with all our issues we've got there so lots of fun and games I've seen some pictures of it's gonna be really dark in here for you guys I've seen some pictures of the differential there's progress being made there so maybe we'll have that back this week that'd be nice never mind all right guys I will um, catch you later on cheers boy